For the first time in more than four years, the Bank of Canada met and decided to reduce the policy rate by 25 basis points. Now, leading up to this rate cut announcement, there was a ton of chatter as to how the greater Toronto area real estate market would react. Would buyers be jumping back in from the sidelines? Somebody did jump back in from the sidelines, but it was not those buyers. Hey everybody, and welcome back to the channel. It's me, Rob Marsiglio, sales representative with Keller Williams Referred Urban Realty out here in Durham region, helping the great people of this part of the province and doing my best to bring you weekly content on this channel, covering all things greater Toronto area real estate with an emphasis on the stats and the numbers. So if you're somebody who enjoys deep dives into trends and numbers, this might be the channel for you. If you get some value out of the video, please hit the like button, consider subscribing so that you don't miss anything going forward. As I touched on in this video, we are going to talk about the effects of the rate cut. There was some immediate effects from this rate cut, but it wasn't those buyers jumping back in off of the sidelines. As a bit of a refresher, here's what the last five years have looked like. We can see the cuts in early 2020. This is March, we got down to near zero rates. We stayed there for the better part of a year and a half before we started this rate hiking cycle in March of 2022. You can see the little pause that we had in early 2023 when we had that kind of bit of a crazy spring market, a couple more hikes in June and July, and we stayed at that 5% rate until June of 2024 that we just passed, and there's that quarter point cut. A lot of people actually waited to list homes until word of a rate cut thinking you know buyers will be back there'll be some more competition for my home and this covers every day from the beginning of february like i said up until this is june 4th you can see that really new listings on a weekly basis peaked that first second week of may uh, before they fell off as a result of you know the long weekend happening and then we had a quiet week the week after the long weekend and it was kind of shaping up to be another quiet week in terms of listings. But then bam, rate cut happens. We saw a massive spike in new listings activity, almost the most active new listings day all year. But then June 6, another clear cut high point, you know, the first time that we actually eclipsed a thousand listings. And we actually got up over 1100 new listings on that day. Things did slow down relatively into Friday, but again, one of the busier Fridays that we've seen from a new listings perspective. And then back to our kind of hunky-dory, regular, quiet weekend. So a lot of sellers coming back to market. One thing that I had some pushback on on Twitter where I shared these charts is that, you know, people don't just make the decision to list their home overnight. Like there's no way this is all as a result of the rate cut. Sure, I agree that people don't make the decision to list right on the day of a rate cut. You know, you don't just get that quick turnaround. But I'm sure people were planning for this kind of weeks in advance if there's a cut might be a great time to list. Now it's important to realize that not all of those new listings after June 5th are, are true new listings. Many of them are terminations and relists, and that can be seen in this chart right here. It's a big spike in terminations, the biggest spike that we've seen this year to date, uh, kind of the latter half of last week after that announcement was made, spiking at you know not quite 450 terminations on the daily. This is a 437 termination day on June 6th. While new listings and terminations activity did spike after the rate cut, we didn't see the same effect on sales, which is not much of a surprise. A lot of times reported sales will lag those new listings coming out and those terminations. So it's gonna take a little bit more time to see if sales activity does increase as a result of these rate cuts. But one thing that I think is very clear based on those new listings and those terminations numbers is that sellers were eyeing a rate cut. They were ready for it. Even some people that were on the market remove their properties, relist it at kind of a more attractive price because of the buzz of these rate cuts in an attempt to drive a little bit more traffic through their listings and bring some better offers or more enticing or appealing offers to those sellers. Now, as a result of all those new listings coming to market, I know we did see a ton of terminations too, but you can see the net result is that we're up over 23,000 active listings on TREB for the first time uh, since going back to June 2010, where we saw over 24,000 active listings. June 2010, May 2010, there's like the peak for active listings all time. We actually saw over 28,000 active listings in Market Watch reports from 2008. And here's how that jump in inventory came together. You can see Halton has really gone parabolic in their jumps. We saw a bit of a leveling off in most markets uh, leading into last week's uh, report that I do every single Monday, my months of inventory update. This is the kind of housing inventory component of that post that I do on a weekly basis over there. But you can see that every market saw an acceleration in inventory growth. And this all happened really from the Wednesday onwards. We saw a jumps right across the board of uh, 1,170 active listings in total across the greater Toronto area. 
which was the biggest jump that we've seen on a week to week basis in 2024. I was early in reporting these new listings totals and the big trend and uptick that we did see from June 5th onwards, but I got some great feedback over on Twitter to kind of break it down by condo and free old inventory and by 416 and 905 inventory. Where did we see the biggest spikes? I want you to pause the video and leave a comment below. Do you think it was in the freehold market, in the condo market, was it in the 905, or was it in the 416? We'll answer this question first. Did the 416 or the 905 see a bigger spike after that rate cut? Here's our rate cut rate in this range, and you can see that it is actually the 905 that saw a massive spike in new listings the day of and the day after the rate cut. Didn't see quite as big of a jump in the 416. It was one of the more active listings week. You know, you have to go back again to the beginning of May to see a, a week where we had new listings quite so active, but in the 905, it was a more definite trend, huge spike, and by far the busiest listing week of the year so far. Now that you know that it's the 905 that saw a bigger jump in new listings, the freehold versus condo answer may be a little bit more obvious too. And I have to admit, I was a little shocked by this one when I first ran the numbers that it was the freehold market that saw the big, big spike in new listings uh, the day of and after the rate cut announcement. Condos, again, similar to what we saw in that 416 versus 905 chart, just about the busiest new listings week we've seen uh, for condos this year so far. But on the freehold side, it was definitely the most busy new listings week. So one more time, pause the video for me and let me know, are you surprised that it is the freehold market that really led the charge in new listings and not condos. We're hearing so much about stress in the pre-con market. There's a lot of investor ownership on the resale side of things. Maybe a lot of those investors already came to market. They're already there on the market. It's the freehold buyers at higher price point that were kind of banking on these rate cuts, hoping for increased buyer sentiment, maybe slight affordability improvement, but you know, not very likely that that's the case. I don't know. I want to know what you think. Why? Did freeholds see this big spike and not the condo side? All right, I hope you got some value out of that video. If you did, like I said, and you don't wanna miss anything going forward, please consider liking it. It really does help me reach more people just like you and subscribing to the channel. Not all of you are subscribed to watch these videos on a weekly basis. It'd really help out if you did hit that subscribe button. Thanks so much for sticking with me right through to the end of another video. Till we speak again next time, please stay safe and cheers.